Hi, everyone. As you know, I believe that travel is an integral part to becoming who you truly are. And over the last year, I've loved sharing moments with you from my time in India, Paris, and of course, my life here in Norway. Well, for this video, I thought I would wrangle in my old college friend, Joy Calvadillion, because she and her husband recently went on a wonderful summer vacation to Scotland. Hi, Joy. How are you? I'm great, Patrick. How are you? I'm good. So I know that you and your husband really love to travel. Y'all been to Iceland, to Scotland, and where else have you been? We've been to London and Paris and Jamaica. We love national parks here in America, so we've been to a lot of the big ones like Yellowstone and Yosemite and uh, the Great Canyon. What is it that you and your husband love so much about traveling? We love new experiences, and we're, we're kind of a little bit different in that. And like, he loves to sit next to a beach, and if I don't hike a mountain, I feel like I haven't been anywhere. So <laughs> And with Scotland, he wanted to see some castles and I wanted to hike some mountains. So it was it was a perfect place to go this year. So I just, I love to look back and, and those experiences really shaped who I am. Let's go ahead and jump into your first adventure in Scotland, which was Harry Potter. So I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I've probably read the book four or five times, which is a little embarrassing. But I, I think they're just magical. And um, J.K. Rowling lived in Edinburgh and wrote most of Harry Potter while she lived there. So there's a small graveyard called Greyfriars Churchyard where she would go to get inspiration to write. And so you'll see gravestones that have, say, Tom Riddle's name on it or uh, McGonagall, I believe. And there's a few other characters that she drew inspiration from. There's a train, a uh, steam engine train travels through Scotland. I think it's about 84 miles long and it's called the Jacobite train and that is where the Hogwarts Express scenes were filmed. The far off shots that you see of the train moving through the highlands. And Harry Potter like you said was a big part of my childhood as well. J.K. Rowling would release the books in July uh, on the years that she published and my birthday's in July so you know in my adolescent ego development stage, I thought that God had created J.K. Rowling herself to give me those books on my birthday. I'm sure you're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and another big part of my childhood besides Harry Potter was the story of the Loch Ness Monster. And I heard that you may have seen Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster, while you were there. I might have seen her poke her head out a couple of times. <laughs> that was actually one of the serendipitous spots. We... We were going to go to the Loch Ness Museum because they have that whole museum dedicated to Nessie. And I'm super excited about it. Then we get there and it's closed for renovation. So that morning we booked a boat tour on the lake where you can actually, you know, go look for her. And it was stormy and gloomy. And so it was a perfect day to go Nessie hunting. So we had a great time doing that. Let's move on to the next part of your trip, which you told me was your favorite part, and that was seeing the puffins. When we were looking into visiting Scotland, I bought a guidebook, and I opened the book, and in like the first two pages, there were there was these these pictures of the puffin colony. I think I bought my tour tickets to go see the puffins two minutes after I bought my flight. <laughs> anyway, they're a huge draw for me. They're so cute and adorable, and just baby puffins are called pufflings. I mean. How can you not want to see them? To, in order to get to the puffins, we had to take about five ferry boats. And ferry boats, I've always been fascinated by them. My grandfather had a house on the lake and we would go every summer. So just I just I've always loved boats and I've always thought that in my next life I would be a ferry boat driver. So we got to ride the ferry boats to to get to the puffins. And on the island where they live, there's there's no structures. It's it's absolutely uninhabited. So you pull up and you see nothing but birds everywhere and they like humans they don't like seagulls because they eat their their young and so uh, since we scared seagulls they really like they really like us and so they'll hop over and fly over to you and get pretty close and yeah so we really really enjoyed it so joy i'm so glad that you had this magical puffin experience and tell us about another really cool experience that you had on the isle of sky the Isle of Skye is just known for like its magical landscape. It's got these landslips and these rock formations that just make it this super special place. And much of the island is, I mean, it's ginormous. It's remote. Although there are a lot of tourists there, it's its easy to drive around the island and find places that, where there aren't lots of people. So we were staying or what was this, on this hobbit looking hut. And it, it's so picturesque. You're right on the shore. 
and you hear sheep behind you. And then our neighbor was actually practicing his bagpipes one evening on his front porch. It was just the quintessential Scottish experience. And we, I had one of those moments where you, you just say, oh, wow, this is, this is life. This is real life. But then uh, as far as the landscape in, in the Isle of Skye, everybody goes to the Isle of Skye to, to do these, these fantastic hikes, which are quite demanding, but very worth it. You, you're taking pictures and it's almost like, what do I not take a picture of? That is the, that is the question. You just want to just have the camera on your face the whole time, but then you can't experience it. So. I was in Big Ben, I guess, four years ago now in Big Ben National Park. I had that similar experience where I wanted to take a picture of everything. Yeah. And then I put my camera down because I realized that it just wasn't going to do justice to what I was seeing. And that night in my journal, I wrote down something that has been a little semi mantra for myself since. And it's a little bit cheesy, but it means a lot to me. And I wrote in my journal, beauty, a camera can't capture it, a mind can't absorb it, but a heart can be transformed by it. I love that. Yeah. The whole time I was hiking, I just I just kept saying over and over in my head the uh, Psalm 23, the Lord restoreth my soul. My husband and I were classical musicians and we work long hours. I'm a business owner. And so anybody that's ever owned a business knows it's like having a baby that never goes to sleep. It's a 24 hour job. And so being able to get away it is just really, really important for our lives to to have that that type of rest. I had a similar experience when we were up in Lafoten Islands, I guess three years ago in the north of Norway. Well, of course in the winter it's like all ice and snow, but in the summer it's incredibly green and there are sheep grazing everywhere, kind of like what you're describing. I didn't necessarily think of Psalm twenty three, but I just felt my whole body relax and it was a really special feeling. And I don't think I've felt that peaceful since I've left Lipton three years ago, actually. But I remember hearing the story about war veterans and how they have been doing these experiments by sending these people that have PTSD to Alaska and, and just putting them in the woods for, for two weeks at a time. And the healing effects that that has on, on the mind, it, it just makes you feel small how healing that can be, being surrounded by mountains and and God's beauty. So it wouldn't be a proper YouTube video about a travel experience if we didn't talk about the food you ate. So tell us everything. The Scottish Time National Dish, what they're really known for, is called haggis. Uh, It's uh, organ meat from a sheep or a calf that is cooked in suet, which is hard fat from a sheep's stomach. I had been on a lot of different travel articles that said, don't think about it, just eat it. <laughs> and it was delicious. I didn't think at all about it. I just, I ate it. And it was, I think, probably the best meal I had while we were there, actually. It tasted just like meatloaf. Yeah, well, you just said reminded me of, uh, I think when I was in third grade, my parents took me down to South Carolina. I'm from North Carolina, as you know. We went to Myrtle Beach for the weekend, and we, my dad ordered calamari, and I loved it. Afterward, my dad was like, do you want to know what that is? And I said, okay. And he said, that's, that's, fried, that's fried squid or fried octopus. And I started dry heaving. So I think you're right. Just don't worry about what it is and just enjoy it. I mean, there's a reason it's so popular. Yeah. Yeah. Very tasty. And I had actually had it while we were on the Isle of Skye. We were on this little bay. It was right as we, we crossed the bridge. There was this really cute little restaurant that was right on the bay. There was a marina right out in front. So we got to watch all the sailboats while I was eating my hot Actually, at that that very restaurant, they served a wonderful fish and chips, which we did not try while we were there. But on the way off of the Isle of Skye, that's what my husband really wanted to eat. And at that point, I think we had had fish and chips like five days out of the five days we were there. <laughs> I really did not want fish and chips. <laughs> I really wanted a piece of beef. And so I was like, do you mind if we just like keep going just a little bit and see if we can find something that might, you know, be good for both of us? So we crossed the bridge and immediately as we got off, there was a little fish shack and right next to it was a, a little hut that made pizza as well. Tell us about the night at the bar. Oh, um, mm-hmm. a funny story. So driving in Scotland is, is, is very different than where we're from in Louisiana. You know, you, obviously you're, you're on the left side of the road and then your driver's seat is, is on the right side of the car. So everything is different. And on top of that, a lot of the roads in the Highlands are only one lane, even though there's two lanes of traffic. So they have these little pull-offs 
where whoever gets to the pull off first has to, you know, get over and then uh, you just wait and, <laughs> and, and until somebody passes you. And that's how it goes. Uh, we have those in north of Norway also, and it's terrifying, <laughs> especially when the transfer trucks are coming at you head on. And these double decker tour buses, and in the highlands, there's all these switchbacks, and the speed limit is 50 miles an hour. So you don't know what's coming around the curb on this one lane. So that was our first day of driving. And so by the time we got to our hotel, we were exhausted and just like so tense. And it was just out in the middle of nowhere. It was just one of those hotels I had booked because I was it was on the road. So we pull into the hotel and little did we know that we had booked at the happening place on the three street town. The bar was completely packed. There was nobody sitting at the front desk to check me in, but there was a little sign that said, if nobody's here, go to the bar. And we just, I walked around to the bar. The lady was like, oh, we're so glad to see you. Here's your key. She didn't check my ID or anything. And she said, um, hey, if, if you don't mind, if you hear the cat at the front door, can you let the cat in? Sure. I'll let the cat in. I think this is my new favorite place. It was like May Mayberry in Scotland. And it was a bank ho banking holiday, I think is what they called it. And so it was it was a party weekend is what I should say. Nobody had to go to work the next day. So they were up until probably 2 a.m. Great. I were trying to sleep rush right above it. But we just turned um, that brown noise or something on our phone and it was fine. It was fine. No problems. <laughs> but uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It was it was one of those surprises. I, I found the same thing that often my most memorable parts of my trips are the parts that aren't planned. Like when I went to India going to a barber shop. Um, that experience was so singularly unique. And that's funny how uh, often those spontaneous moments in travel are the ones that stand out the most. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I love to plan, kind of be ahead of the game. But when when we, we leave that least little room of flexibility, that's often like where the magic happens. There's always those, those moments where you, you actually think at the time, I'm going to re remember this forever. Those typically always happen when, when you least expect it. So I said it wouldn't be a proper vacation video on YouTube if we didn't talk about the food in Scotland, but it wouldn't be a proper Scotland video if we didn't talk about the castles that you saw. So give us the gossip. Oh, the castles. The first castle on our list was uh, Stirling Castle. It's like right between where the lowlands and the highlands meet. And so back in the day, like if you occupied Stirling Castle, you occupied the country, you were in charge. And then our second stop, we stopped at Balmoral Castle. And it was about 20 minutes before they closed. So like I said, that was one of those moments where you, uh, we just left a little bit of flexibility and they let us in. I was shocked that they let us in 20 minutes before the castle closed. There's only one room open and that was the ballroom. And they had a really awesome display of the royal family's personal photos. Queen Elizabeth, she would spend every summer there. And, you know, Queen Elizabeth loved her dogs, and so she has her corgi graveyard in Balmoral State. And so we got to to go look at her, our, her dog, get, visit her dog cemetery in Scotland. Dogs are very important to them. Leaving flowers on the graves, they would leave sticks. And so every time we go to a little pet cemetery, there's piles of sticks on each grave. And so that was really cool. But we had the place to ourselves because it was like 30 minutes before it closed. So everybody else was, was already gone. That sounds really special. And I love the idea of a dog graveyard and sticks instead of roses. That's just totally up my alley, of course. My absolute favorite castle was Edinburgh Castle. And that was the most crowded, but it was the most crowded for a reason, because you guys see all the cool stuff. Uh, the crown jewels of Scotland, the Stone of Destiny, which has been used in the coronation of Scottish kings for centuries and centuries. It was stolen by King Edward around 1296 and taken to England. So it's been used in um, all of the English coronations since the throne was joined. Actually, probably since 1296 when it was stolen. So anyway, it was returned back to, to Scotland in 1996. And now it only goes to England for the coronation. So it was actually there for King Charles's coronation. But it was returned and I got to see it. I was so excited because we had been to Westminster. And I had seen the throne. So I knew where it was supposed to go. There's a little sign that says, here's where the song goes. <laughs> but you have to go to Scotland and see it. And so now, you know, we got to see it. And so that was, that was very exciting for me. Edinburgh Castle has housed prisoners for every major war 
since it was built, basically. So a highlight of the castle for me was seeing where the Revolutionary War soldiers were kept from America. And they... Like the United States American Revolution. They were kept in Scotland. Yeah. They, oh, wow. Okay. They captured some of our prisoners and held them in, in the castle. And they have the prison doors on display that were used for these prisoners. And even back in the day, you know, they, people were, were drawing and, and graffitiing on, on the doors. And so I actually got to see a little bit, a little American flag that was um, etched into, into the prison door. And that's another thing I love about traveling is there's so many parts, like I'm a huge lover of history like you are. You know, we both love David McCulloch's books and right. you know, we, we both just devour history. But when you go and travel, first of all, you, you, you actually get to see the places where the people that you've read about have walked and that's powerful. But the other thing is you get to learn about all these little facts that you really can't find in a book, like the American flag on the door of Edinburgh Castle, where the prisoners of the American Revolution were kept, you know, like who knows that besides you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so the McLeod clan is based in, in Isle of Skye and their castle is called Dunvegan uh, Castle. And so we got to visit Dunvegan. And uh, some of the stuff that they have displayed in, in that castle is just amazing. It was built in probably, I think the, uh, the well was built in like the year 1100. So there's a lot of history there. One of the clan mothers found her child being rocked by by a fairy in this in this cloth and they left it behind and so the cloth took on the significance where if they went to war they had to take the cloth with them so the right they wouldn't win and so it's it's kind of tattered and uh i mean it's about weird to look so of course it's, it's all tattered anyway but it's uh, it's on their wall and that's the the most important thing to them and right outside in the castle there was a woman who had an owl on her shoulder named guinevere and she let me hold guinevere and so that was very Harry Potter-esque. And I got to get my picture too. Yeah. With this beautiful owl. She was uh, very sweet. And it's one of those lawns where you're like, yeah, I'm in the right spot. I'm, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. That's awesome. Well, Julie, I so appreciate you taking the time to make this video. Is there any particular way that you'd like to end our time together today? You know, if you have the resources, you take a trip. Go somewhere that you've never been before. You never know what you might see. For me, traveling has brought a lot of light into my world. You know, I'm, a, I'm a lover of light, not of darkness. So, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, I would say, life-altering and life-changing. Nice. And uh, I certainly treasure the memories that we have of our crazy, zany undergraduate days. And, yeah, it's good to catch up with you. Yeah, yeah, you too, you too. I hope you enjoyed this video of Joy sharing her experiences in Scotland. If you found value from it, please hit that magical red subscribe button. And as always, I wish you nothing but the best on your journey to becoming all that you truly are.